A small territory does not necessarily imply insignificance or incompetence. Israel serves as a testament to this thesis. Since its inception, Israel has developed an array of impressive weaponry, from drones, tanks, and missiles, to satellites and cybersecurity tools. Israel has undeniably succeeded in creating a unique aerospace and defense industry. But how did this happen? How did a small country with a population of 9 million transform into a high-tech military power that now confronts almost the entire Arab world? The fact that Israel is a major player in the global arms market is hardly news to anyone. Those who view Israel unfavorably see it as a source of hostility, while others consider it an example of expanding possibilities. However, regardless of geopolitical preferences, the understanding of the Israeli state is rooted in its military industry. When Israel was established, its armed forces were a collection of armed groups barely capable of producing ammunition for firearms. The government had to procure weapons from established defense industries, often done covertly or illegally. In the early years of the state's formation, this situation produced sufficient results. But in the 1970s, everything changed dramatically. Israel made a serious geopolitical miscalculation. Up until that point, France had been Israel's main supplier of weapons. However, for political reasons, the French changed their position, leaving Israel without modern tanks and fighter jets. Simultaneously, the Soviet Union began supplying Arab states with a vast amount of advanced weaponry. Soon a devastating war broke out. Israel still managed to win it, but a new wave of hostility was imminent. The conflict exposed the strategic vulnerability of the Israeli side, its dependence on foreign arms supplies. To survive in the coming decades, Israel had to find a different approach. And since it couldn't compete with the Arab countries in terms of human resources, weaponry, and financing, it could either resort to innovation or cease to exist. This immediate threat of total annihilation became a key motivator, prompting Israel to embark on a nationwide initiative to establish new branches of the defense industry. Israeli policymakers turned to the traditional Jewish educational system, channeling resources into research and development. A significant part of Israel's GDP was allocated to this effort, larger than that of any other country. At the same time, a new military division was created, named the Talpiot Program, its participants were tasked with surveillance and innovation implementation. People demonstrating outstanding academic and managerial abilities were selected to join. They were screened and integrated into every branch of the Israeli armed forces, infantry, artillery, engineering corps, intelligence, and aerospace units. Talpiot members delved into the intricacies of the armed forces, then entered the research and development program. Similar programs were subsequently established to recruit talent into the military ranks, for example, a special initiative was founded to encourage the recruitment of veterans who had proven themselves in wars. Former tank crew members with experience in combat deployment gained additional motivation to participate in the development of combat vehicles. In addition to implementing these reforms, Israel did something unusual. It completely eliminated bureaucracy, separating military leadership from scientists and entrepreneurs. As a result, the armed forces became capable of interacting swiftly and easily with legislators, investors, and researchers. Soon, a similar close interaction was established within the military hierarchy itself. For instance, while in most armed forces, conflicts between officers of different ranks are considered unacceptable, in Israel it became an acceptable practice. Junior servicemen had the opportunity to debate with high-ranking officers as it increased productivity and eliminated conventional thinking. To this day, these Israeli reforms remain unique and nearly impossible to replicate, as no other state exists on the brink of annihilation. In the following years, Israel's own defense industry demonstrated its ability to find solutions to strategic and tactical problems. For example, in 1969, Israel needed information about the location of Egyptian armed forces near the Suez Canal. Israeli scientists developed a small radio-controlled aircraft with a high flight range and an onboard camera. This marked the first military application of reconnaissance drones, providing Israel with valuable intelligence about Egyptian fortifications along the Suez Canal. The success of this radio-controlled device laid the foundation for the creation of modern high-end Israeli unmanned aerial vehicles. Additionally, the success of these drones became a defining factor in the successful conduct of conflicts with Syria. Around the same time, Israel was in negotiations with the United Kingdom to acquire a new type of multi-purpose tanks. The deal was close to completion, but at the last moment, the British pulled back. Then Israel mobilized human resources from veterans and developed its own tank. 
This tank named Merkava was released several years later and quickly became a symbol of Israel's defense industry. Another breakthrough occurred in the mid-1970s, when Americans supplied Israel with new satellite surveillance technologies. However, the system was not sufficient. Without strategic depth, Israel needed real-time satellite surveillance. So it initiated its own satellite program, and in 1988, the OFEC-1 satellite was launched into orbit. Israel thus became one of the few countries with its own satellite capabilities, a significant achievement for such a small nation. However, the fundamental factor accelerating Israel's technological development was the support from the United States. Since 1976, Israel has been the largest recipient of U.S. foreign aid, with the total assistance reaching a staggering $81 billion by 2001. Comparing this support with Israel's annual military expenditure reveals that nearly a quarter of Israel's military essentially came or comes from the United States. This aid became a key factor in shaping Israel's defense industry. Its reconnaissance satellites played a significant role during the Gulf War in the 1990s, when Iraq launched volleys of tactical ballistic missiles at Israel, shocking the country's military leadership. Israeli satellites could track enemy missile installations. However, as missiles became cheaper, smaller, and more accessible, the threat extended not only from hostile states, but also non-state entities like Hezbollah or Hamas. Under the guise of the Gulf War, hostile groups daily launched dozens of rockets towards Israeli settlements. To fully counter this threat, a new type of air defense was needed. Israel began developing a new defense system, and within a few years created three new types of weapons. Iron Dome, Arrow, and David Sling, each of them served different tactical purposes, but together they eliminated the rocket threat, or at least a significant part of it. Israel's technological production of satellites and air defense systems quickly earned its reputation. It is ironic that even France, Britain, and the United States, once reluctant to export arms to Israel, now eagerly sought to import Israeli air defense systems. The principles of warfare are constantly changing. As soon as a new threat appears, a new type of weaponry is created. The most recent and current threat to Israel comes from Iran's nuclear weapons. To obtain nuclear weapons, Iran must engage in uranium enrichment, a process requiring centrifuges. Since 2009, Iranian centrifuges have been gradually failing. The reason behind this was a cyber weapon called Stuxnet, a new type of cyber warfare jointly created by the United States and Israel. Stuxnet hacked Iranian centrifuges, allowing their motors to be sped up to the point of malfunction. Israel's new weapon managed to halt Iran's nuclear program without firing a single shot. Cyberspace has become a new arena for modern warfare, and after the Stuxnet attack, Israel appears to be a leader in cybersecurity. However, this technological leap that Israel continues to make has also given rise to a constructive secondary effect. Progressive military technologies have turned Israel into a country of startups. It takes time to integrate military developments into civilian activities, but in Israel, due to the mentioned absence of bureaucracy, this process occurs faster. Another additional effect is called armament diplomacy. Countries seeking to acquire advanced weaponry from Israel must first strengthen their diplomatic and economic ties with Israel as a precondition. This diplomacy of armament has allowed Israel to build strategic relationships in the most unexpected regions, thereby strengthening its geopolitical position. In general, Israel's military reforms and programs in the 1970s and 1980s transformed it into one of the world's largest arms exporters. Its multi-billion dollar industry became a consequence of geopolitical necessity. Those who exist on the brink of extinction must adapt faster than anyone else. Write in the comments what you think about the situation that is currently happening in Israel. If you found something new and interesting in this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Caro Show channel. See you later.